Hi, I'm Lynn Langett, Cloud Architect and Developer and the first Google Developer Expert or GDE. Lately, I've been working with bioinformatics clients building cloud-based genomic scale pipelines. In this talk, I'm going to talk about patterns for implementing effective pipelines on the Google Cloud Platform. There are four parts. What is needed in this area? Why do we need to have patterns and how do you learn them? How are you going to use pattern information and how can you learn more? First, we need to understand the scale and scope of the problem. In my work as a cloud architect, I've worked with some pretty big data sets in FinTech in New York and London, in AdTech in LA, but genomic scale data sets are a whole new level. The amount of data that's being generated by mostly human genomic analysis requires new patterns for building effective analysis pipelines on the cloud. Now, when I talk about scale, what do I mean? Can I give an example? Yeah, I will. A recent client that I've been working with is the Broad Institute at MIT and Harvard. On average, they've been putting in 17 terabytes per day into the Google Cloud. This is an astounding number. Think about it in your own work in data pipelining. Are any of you working at anywhere close to this scale yet? If not, I think you will be, even if you're not in genomics. And the reason for this is the amount of data that's being generated. I've had other projects in the IoT area, in ad tech, and they come close to this. But genomics is at the cutting edge. So what are the challenges in building effective GCP pipelines at this scale? Well, there's a lot of them. First, cloud practices. Which services should our researchers use? Should they use virtual machines? Should they use BigQuery? Should they use higher level services? How are they going to understand DevOps practices? How are they going to work with configuration as code? And really importantly, how are they going to learn about service cost control? You can make a very expensive mistake very fast with this amount of data. Speaking of data, how are we going to try out and learn these services? The data that many of my clients work with is personally identifiable human health data. How are we going to work with downsampled data sets? These data sets are huge. They have 3 billion letters, and they do analysis across the genome. Speaking of the genome, researchers really want to work with genomics examples. Most of the examples in learning cloud services are generic. Hello world. And that really doesn't resonate with my customers. On top of that, in genomics, there is an increasing uh, approach moving towards tools and libraries, such as JTK, the Genomic Analysis Toolkit, and the WIDL, or WDL, Workflow Definition Language, the Nextflow Library in Language, NF, and Galaxy Project. There are many others. So what I've done to address this knowledge gap is I've created an open source course on GitHub. It is 100% free because it's on GitHub, and it consists of notes, markdown pages, screencasts, code examples, and sample data. Importantly, all of the examples use genomic data. It's called GCP for Bioinformatics. So this course introduces researchers to working with raw Google Cloud infrastructure or systems for genomic analysis built on the Google Cloud, including Terra.bio from the Broad Institute in Verily, Variant Spark Library from CSIRO Bioinformatics in Sydney, Australia, Nextflow IO from the group in Europe, Galaxy Project, which is global, and others. Now to get an understanding of the complexity, let's first consider batch compute for analysis. If you start at the bottom of the diagram, although today we're talking about the Google Cloud, many of my researchers are faced with the additional complexity of collaborating with researchers who work with a different vendor cloud. So we have a number of public vendor clouds. On top of that, they'll build their analysis on clusters of virtual machines 
and increasingly containers. And on top of that, many of them are now starting to use orchestration layers such as Spark or Kubernetes. On top of all that cloud infrastructure, researchers are often using these bioinformatics tools and libraries that I previously mentioned, such as Terra.bio, Nextflow, Galaxy, and more. Those libraries have associated languages such as WIDL, WDL, CWL, Common Workflow Language, Nextflow, NF, or GA. And those tools often have orchestration layers, such as Cromwell for Terra.bio or MiniWIDL. Uh, Pipelines API is actually a Google API that works in conjunction with a lot of these higher level libraries. Does this look confusing? Well, it is. There's a lot of different tools and libraries to understand. It's one of the reasons that I made this course, to break all these services into parts and pieces so that they can be learned and understood individually and then combined effectively. Now, in addition to batch compute, you'll notice a similar but not identical kind of pattern here, and this is interactive analysis. Now, this keys around the center square in the center of the center square, the IPython notebook, or IPYNB. It is becoming a pattern in genomics to create reproducible research in the form of a Jupyter notebook. And so an important pattern in pipelining is scaling those notebook environments using Jupyter Hub or Google Colabs. So again, there are a number of parts and pieces to working with these pipelining infrastructures. And my course covers all of these on the Google Cloud. So drilling into the highlights of what my course covers, it really is designed to be consumed in the way that you actually work with the cloud. There is a level zero for setting up your account and setting up cost control. Level one is files and data, because of course we're computing on files. And I cover core services such as storage buckets, Google Cloud Storage. I cover public data sets that are available, such as 1,000 genomes and other data sets for genomics that have restricted access. Services like BigQuery, which provides serverless SQL querying on top of uh, files and can be used for genomic type files such as VCF or variant calling format. Also, I cover higher level services such as Terra.bio reference data sets. In the compute area, I cover topics such as virtual machines, running containers, of course, clusters of each of these, and also include information about serverless or functions at the workflow level, but also the Google Life Sciences API, which is called the Pipelines API, Nextflow, and higher level services such as Terra.bio. Additionally, to cover the interactive pattern, I have information about working with and setting up Jupyter Notebook environments on the Google Cloud Platform. I also include modern DevOps practices such as CICD or continuous integration and continuous deployment. And I have information about machine learning that's specific to genomics, covering examples of libraries like DeepVariant, TensorFlow IO, and Google Nucleus. Another aspect of the course design is that my examples are designed to be quick. One of the challenges that I found when I was learning genomics tools as a cloud architect is many of the examples reflected real world, and real world can be huge amounts of data. So a hello world can take minutes or hours or even days to run. And that just wasn't a way that I wanted to work. So I provide example data and I provide specific steps to try out each service. My course is designed to run on a trial Google Cloud Platform account. And if you run with my example data sets, it should be at nearly no cost. I never pay more than a dollar or two. And importantly, most examples run in five minutes or less. So you can quickly get up and running and you can find out if the service is gonna work for your particular analysis needs. Another aspect to the way I've designed the course is I've designed it at three levels for each of the service areas. So for example, for files, for data, for compute, so on and so forth. So the three levels are infrastructure as a service, and this is for researchers who wanna set up, control, and manage everything. The level of data, for example, they might wanna set up their own RDBMS or relational database. They might wanna set up their own NoSQL environment on virtual machines or on Google Cloud Storage buckets. At the compute layer, 
these researchers would prefer to set up their own clusters of Google Compute Engine virtual machines or Docker images on Google Kubernetes Engine. There are other researchers who would prefer to work at the platform level. They would rather run their analysis over managed services and let Google handle more of the underlying infrastructure. So data, this looks like data lakes that are running on GCS buckets, Google Cloud Storage buckets, and use of public reference genomics data. At the compute layer, this often manifests by using services such as Dataproc or the Google Life Sciences API, which efficiently handles orchestration of groups of virtual machines, allowing the researchers to dynamically spin up and spin down compute resources. And it allows them to take advantage of uh, aspects that are specific to Google Cloud, such as preemptible instances, so that they can save lots of money, which is really important at this scale. Still, other researchers prefer to work at the software as a service level. And one example of this is using the Terra.bio system, which is a web UI that was designed by the Broad Institute and Verily that currently runs on top of the Google Cloud platform. In this case, rather than interacting with the GCP console or using tools such as GSUtil, my researchers will go to the Terra.bio platform and they can access both their own data and publicly available genomic data through the Terra UI. Also, they can spin up and spin down Jupyter Notebook instances and compute clusters that run on top of the Life Sciences API through the web UI. Now, that's a lot of different areas to think about. So I think at this point it'll be helpful if we actually take just a brief look at the course on GitHub. In this demo, I want to show you my open source course that I built, GCP for Bioinformatics. So first, we're gonna go out to the site on GitHub. And this is where all the artifacts for the course are located. You can see that the course is organized by topic area and it's set up in folders. So they're numbered in a logical order. You would, of course, start by setting up your GCP account, then you would work with files and data, then you would work with virtual machines, Docker containers, or functions, so compute, and multiple instances. You may add machine learning. You also might use code and cloud service tools, such as continuous integration and continuous deployment, container registries, and other tools. In each section, the organization is set up as follows. At the beginning of each section, there's a readme. So there's a main readme. I'll just scroll down here. And you can see that I've consistently used uh, emoji throughout the repository to make it easier to scan. You can see the list here. As it says, this repo includes content you can read, watch, or run. So you can read pages of the repo. You can think of them as notes. You can watch linked YouTube screencasts or demonstrations. You can try out the computational examples using Jupyter Notebooks. There are linked GitHub repos, and there are additional advanced topic links at the end of each section. On each page, there will be a linked YouTube video. So you just click the graphic to go to the video. If you prefer to learn by watching screencasts, you can simply go to the playlist that I've created and linked. And as you can see, there are 27 different short screencasts, mostly around five minutes, some of them are six or seven, that cover the topics via demonstrations. Now, just to get an idea of how each topic is set up, we'll take a look at one topic area, just so you can understand the structure, which is consistent throughout the course. So here we have in the files and data section, uh, in that section, we have a topic called uh, SQL questions. And this topic uh, is covering using the BigQuery service with a bioinformatics or genomic example. So you can see first there's a little explanation about it. And then these uh, notes pages are very action oriented in the design in that they're created so that you can actually try out the service with a genomics example within five to 10 minutes and get a result that quickly as well. This is a little bit unusual. It's one of the reasons I made the course because I've seen a lot of bioinformatics examples that take hours to run. And I really 
in course design wanted to create examples that would cost basically nothing to try out because of the tiny sizes of the sample data sets and would be just really quick and easy. Now in the case of BigQuery, I've included a number of screenshots in this notes page because I'm assuming that for most people taking the course, this will be a new service. So you can see, for example, I've used this screenshot in the beginning of this page. Now this page actually is a link out to an additional course, and this is a course on using the ANSI SQL language against a sample genomic data set. And if you just go down the page, this page is a little bit longer than some of the other pages, because it's a three-part course. And you can see, for example, we've got SQL queries here that you can actually run. Now, just to show you how this is intended to be used, the course is designed to be used with a trial GCP uh, actual account. So you can run the lessons and, and learn by doing. So for this particular one, if I scroll way down here for a second, and I'll just stop here. This is an example using a concept called a self-join on a very, very small but a domain-specific example. Um, and, and so the idea here is to return a hierarchy. And the uh, lesson, as you can see, is write a SQL query to return the grandparent category of gly glycine binding. So um, to show you the environment where you'd work with this, this is BigQuery in GCP. And for this course, I've created a uh, publicly available, really small sample data set. So you can see here, I'll click on this experiments table and I can actually preview it and it has just five rows. Again, really tiny examples here. One of the concepts, as I've mentioned in talking about this course, is that you can explore these services with examples that come from genomics that are tiny. So you can do it basically at no cost and in just a short amount of time. So the course is completely on GitHub, so it's completely free, it's completely open source. I really welcome any suggestions from the community. The best way to do that is through pull requests, just sort of the typical GitHub process. And I really look forward to the contributions and the feedback of the bioinformatics research community. It's Lynn Langett, and the course is GCP for Bioinformatics. Thank you.